Going to unbox the Nikon P950. Here's the strap it comes with, and then this is to plug in the USB cable that it comes with. And then you plug this into your wall, and that's how you charge the batteries in the camera. The Nikon P950, in this video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of this camera. It was originally released in January of 2020. I'm recording this video in January of 2022. So this has been two years since this camera has been released. But if you try to look online, it's really hard to find this camera new uh, for, for at least the price it, it should be, the retail price, uh, which is around uh, $800 US. Uh, these cameras are not really available anymore um, I mean it's not it's not discontinued it's just hard to find because of the supply chain I'm assuming at least in America uh, maybe in different countries you can still uh, find these cameras in stock but I, I couldn't I was lucky to, to, to find one limited stock and I I bought it and the the main reason why this camera is very popular is uh, because of its lens and and that's about it the lens is 2,000 millimeters. The P1000 is 3,000 millimeters, but it's a much bigger camera, and I think it's a year older than the P950. The P950 has a little bit of new technology compared to the P1000, but they give you, from what I understand, essentially the same image quality. It's just that the P1000 gets you 3,000 millimeters, and the P950 gives you 2,000. And 2,000 millimeters in a camera of this size is, there's nothing else like it on the market currently. Um, there's other cameras such as these traditional camcorders, these smaller ones. This camera can go over 600 millimeters, uh, but 600 millimeters compared to 2,000 millimeters, uh, it doesn't really compare. It's not the same. And I'll show some test shots of this camera. Getting shots of the moon is fantastic in video and in stills. The capturing the moon is amazing. It's hard to go handheld once you zoom all the way out. So I use a tripod, put this on a tripod, a very sturdy tripod too, because the slightest shake is gonna cause wobble and mess with the focus and lose your framing. So you really gotta have a, a good solid heavy duty tripod if you're gonna use this in its max zoom. Uh, but it, it does have uh, image stabilization that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad handheld. So it's an 83 times zoom lens and it shoots 4K video. The sensor is pretty small though. It's a 16 megapixel, one over two thirds inch CMOS sensor. Um, not that um, big of a sensor, but when you're shooting in daylight or if you're shooting the moon, because the moon has a lot of light, uh, you'll, you'll be fine. And, and I'll put on uh, the shots, test shots I did of the moon and it was good. I, th I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna go to the body and the menu and just these first impressions. The accessories that when you purchase this for $800, hopefully $800 or less, you get a lens hood. And this lens hood is plastic and it doesn't really feel nice. Here's what it looks like when it's on the camera. Oh, you have to take off the lens cap in order to put the lens hood on. Screw that. And then you could, you could still put the lens cap on, but you have to take the lens cap off in order to put the hood on. And that's what it looks like. I don't think it looks good. It looks ugly. The P950 is very lightweight. It is 35.5 ounces. So even though it might look heavy, it's very light, which is good and bad. It's good that it's if you wanna carry this around for traveling, it's good, but it's bad because it does feel flimsy and that's one of the complaints I have with it already. My first impression is it, it feels hollow and it feels like a cheap plastic. All of the ports, or at least the covers, they don't feel uh, premium. The I would need to really secure this if I'm traveling. And as far as the weather resistance, I don't think this is weather resistant. It might say that, but when I'm using it, it does not feel sturdy at all. I would not bring this to the beach. I'd be not put this in the snow or the rain. 
even though people who would want to buy this camera, it uh, it's advertised for bird watchers. If you're a bird watcher, you like bird photography, 2,000 mil, you know, or animal, you're on safari to capture animals. You you would think that would require a camera that needs to withstand the elements, but maybe this does, but it just it doesn't feel like it would. It d- does not feel like a premium build. And that's unfortunate for an $800 price tag. But uh, let me go through some of the buttons here on the side. This button here is pretty cool because what it does is if when you're zoomed all the way out, it's a single touch button. And then that allows you to, it automatically zooms out so you can have, see more of your frame. And then it has a little box that shows you where you're zoomed in. So it just helps you with framing. That's what that is. Then you have your zoom rocker telephoto here but you also have your zoom here so there's two places for the zoom and here this is a multi-function dial uh, you can I think you could program this to whatever you want and I think I have it for focus manual focus because there's no focus ring I believe the P1000 has a focus ring this has this turn wheel right here there's a microphone input here 3.5 mic in- input jack there's no headphone jack but there is a mic input jack Here's a flash right here, up here. This looks like a hot shoe that can take accessories. Then you have, this is your remote control. If you have a remote control. On this side, you have your HDMI and USB. You're gonna need the USB because that's the only way to charge the battery. This does not come with a separate battery charger. You have to charge the batteries within the camera using the USB. On the top, here are your dials. You have your mode dial up here, pretty easy to use. It's not locking. You have your on off switch and then this here can function with different, uh, I think I have this set for the shutter and then right here there's another wheel in the back that I have set for the F, the iris. And you have other buttons here that you can go into different menu settings. Here's the record button for video. Here's your focus. You can choose autofocus or manual focus. This button right here can toggle the EVF or the LCD back and forth on and off. So you can have it on auto where there's an eye sensor here. So whenever anything goes in front of the EVF, it automatically switches to the EVF and shuts off the LCD. Or you can disable that and then have this button here and this button will switch between the LCD and the EVF. I like that much better. This is a 3.2 inch very LCD. I don't think it's the best quality, but let me turn on the camera now and go through the menu system. The zoom takes a while to, to go all the way. So let me just go and show you the extension of the zoom. And that's 2000 millimeters. This is what it looks like. Let me zoom back out. Oh, let, let me zoom back out using this this toggle here. It's going. It's taking a while. You're not going to get this fast. You're going to have to set your zoom and then frame your shot up. It takes a little time. Okay, here's the very angle. So I'll, let me go through the video mode first. Uh, you do have man- full manual control over all the video settings. It's just that it's not easy to, to change the settings. The inbuilt mics on this camera, not very good. It's very thin and hollow. It reminds me of camera uh, audio quality from years, years past, maybe a, like a decade ago. It's very hollow. But once you use the 3.5 mil, depending on the uh, quality of your microphone, you get that bass and then that fuller sound. So I would use, if you want to vlog with this or record audio, I would always use an external mic. But you have your mic controls. The zoom microphone, that just means is as you zoom, it, it tries to focus the, the pattern of the mic. Uh, I don't think it works very well, so I just disable it. Here's your picture controls. You don't have a lot of choices. You have standard, neutral, vivid, and mono. I have it on neutral and then within the neutral, you can set three different levels of image, the sharpening, contrast, and saturation. Then you have your white balance. Uh, there's no white balance button. I think you can maybe do a custom somewhere 
I don't I haven't figured that out yet, but you have to do the white balance and the ISO in the menu system. I'm going to have to look up how I can just program some function buttons if, or if that's even possible. And here's the ISO settings. You already have some preset auto ISOs that you can go to. And this looks the same for the stills. And uh, for right now, I'm just going to use 200. And then you have your movie options. This is what quality. Here are the different qualities you can sh uh, shoot at. You can go all the way to UHD 30p. And then you have 1080 30p, 1080 60p, and then these lower resolutions that I don't think, I wouldn't use those lower resolutions. I would only stick with the, the 4K 30p. Um, there is only 30 and 60, but there's another button here that you can toggle, whoops. You can go to different frame rates. So right now, uh, there's the frame rate here, 30 but you can set everything to 25. It doesn't do 24p, 25 is PAL. You can set it to 25 and then you can shoot UHD 4K at 25 frames, not 24. I don't know why they did that. I don't see why that couldn't be a firmware update, but it's already been two years and they haven't done that. So maybe they're not gonna do that. Uh, external mic, it's disabled until you plug in a mic and then you can also dial in the mic sensitivity. However, you don't have audio bars. There's no audio bars in the uh, once you go to video here. There's no way to bring up any audio bars. So this is not the best camera professional video capture. I am going to use the video quality uh, video capture when I'm doing the moon or anything really telephoto, but I'm going to find another audio source. I'm not going to use the audio from here. When I'm all the way zoomed out, it goes to a 2.8. But then as you zoom the lens automatically stops down to a 6.5. There you go. 6.5 f-stop when you're already at 2,000. So you can't go lower than 6.5, or, or you can't get more open from 6.5 once you zoom all the way. You're that's you're limited to that. But 2,000 millimeters. So what? Come on. <laughs> it only goes to f8. You can't do anything greater than an f8. Which, which could pose a problem if you're shooting in bright sunlight and you're shooting video and you want to lock your shutter speed. You're going to need neutral density filters. This does not have inbuilt, there's no NDs in here. So you'll have to screw on an ND filter and so you're able to shoot uh, once you go all the way closed down to an F8. F8 isn't that closed down. I'm surprised it only goes to an F8. Usually they go to cameras go to f11 or f16 there's a, there's a 29 minute time limit in all of the video settings so you don't have an unlimited record time you have a max of 29 minutes so that's a quick tour of the camera the menu and the, the body i only purchased this for the zoom lens and i and i think that's why anyone would want to get this this the nikon p950 isn't the kind of camera you would vlog with or, or travel with an like an all-purpose travel camera i would argue your phone your smartphone is a better all-around travel camera that you can always have with you this is only if you want to shoot the moon <laughs> shoot the moon you get the p950 if you can find the p950 in stock uh, and you want to shoot the moon or shoot birds or uh if you're you're a creep and you want to shoot your neighbors from the other side of your building then yeah, you could do that too, I guess.